Hi, my name is Quadzilla, and last year I hiked for nine and a half months, 7,400 miles. This video will cover how my body changed through those thousands of miles and all those months of hiking. I'll also cover some strategies for maintaining weight and getting calories on trail, and also strategies for getting your health and muscle and strength back after the trail. My hike was called the Calendar Year Triple Crown, and that is hiking the Appalachian, Pacific Crest, and Continental Divide trails all within one calendar year. Over 290 days, I walked from Georgia to Maine, and then Mexico to Canada, and Canada back down to Mexico. It averaged out to about a marathon a day, and this is with a heavy pack going up and down mountains and sleeping outside most nights. Oh my god. Then I'm leaving. I'm at 208.2 with all my clothes on. I need to lose some weight. My intention was to do a bunch of running and train for this trail as I would train for an ultra marathon, but that didn't happen at all and instead I spent all winter being depressed, staying inside, not running at all, eating a bunch of donuts, and basically just lifting two to three times a week, and I ended up gaining about 15 pounds of fat. In the first two weeks, everything in my body hurt, like every joint, every muscle, especially in my legs. I was getting cramps in my calves and my hamstrings, especially at night. And that's pretty typical of these long trails. It's going to take your body at least a few weeks to acclimatize. And before then, you're going to experience a lot of pain, a lot of muscle soreness, and a lot of cramping in your muscles. I lost about 10 pounds in the first month even though I was eating as much as I physically could, literally stuffing myself until I couldn't fit any more food into my stomach. This is what it takes to stay fueled up. This is two big old steaks, a bunch of kale, and then I have room to cook some eggs, otherwise I'll cook these in the morning, carry some out. Even doing that, I still lost 10 pounds because my body just wasn't used to holding on to that extra weight. So it's really not helpful to try to put on extra weight before your hike because if your body's not used to being at that set point, you're just going to lose that weight very quickly. Man, my body has gotten to a different level these last few weeks, pushing through all that snow in Vermont and then into New Hampshire and just, uh, yeah, just pushing through all the snow. I can feel um, like my legs and my lungs, my cardio, it's, it's at a level that I don't know that I've ever been this, uh, this fit. The two to three month mark is when I always feel my best. It's when I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life. It's when I feel the strongest. It's when I feel like my cardio and my legs and everything else is in the best condition. If you're looking for the optimal amount of time to be out where you lose the most amount of fat and gain the most amount of fitness without damaging your body, I think that 60 to 90 day mark is that perfect mark. Stop. The area ahead has the worst weather in America. Many have died there from exposure, even in the summer. Turn back now if the weather is bad. <laughs> On this trip, that optimal zone for me was when I was going through the White Mountains of New Hampshire, and these were covered in ice and snow, and it was incredibly tough going, but my body felt super strong. I was able to push up and over these ice-covered mountains um, 16, 18, 20 hours a day sometimes, and just keep going day after day, and that was uh, the strongest I felt on this entire trip. Look at this view. Took another fall right on that rock and uh, yeah, took that skin right off. It took me 94 days to finish the Appalachian Trail and my legs are pretty destroyed by the end just from getting cut on rocks and on ice and thorns. I lost about 20 pounds, went down to 188 from 208 and a good majority of that was fat and a lot of it was that excess weight that I had gained before the trail. I flew straight from Maine to San Diego to start the Pacific Crest Trail. It was quite a shock to the system to go from Maine, where the last snows were still melting, over to the Sonoran Desert in California, where temperatures were already reaching 100 degrees in the day. And even though I had hiked for 2,000 miles at this point, my body just was not acclimatized, and my first week on the trail was really tough. I just was not used to the heat. And my feet weren't acclimatized to the dust and sand that you pick up on the PCT. So even though my body was capable of walking about 30 miles a day, my feet were getting blisters because of the extra abrasion caused by the dust and the sand. Look at that rattler. It's a big one. After my body acclimatized to the heat, it was pretty smooth sailing on the PCT. I was able to do about 35 miles a day on full days consistently. 
I lost 8 pounds on the 3 months I spent on the PCT and the muscle loss here is a lot more noticeable. Breakfast buffet. My priority when I get into town is to get as much high quality protein as I can and then fill in the rest of my calories. So this will look like eating a rotisserie chicken or a steak followed by rice, potatoes, and pasta. And then after that I'll have ice cream and chocolate milk and just really anything else I can stuff into my stomach to add to the calories. On trail I follow a similar method. I try to get about a little over half of my calories from more high quality food sources like nuts and tuna packets, um, chia seeds, rice, cheese, those sorts of things. And then the other half of my calories I'm going to get from whatever I can stomach, whatever I can force down. So those will be more like Snickers bars, Pop Tarts, Cliff Bars, those sorts of foods. Because as much as you want to eat healthy, it's just hard to get totally clean calories on trail and you need so many calories, you just have to force down whatever your body will is willing to accept. After about 4 or 5 months on trail, the body really becomes super well adapted to long distance hiking and at this point, I stop losing fat nearly as much, I'm just burning through muscle mostly and actually gain a little bit of fat in terms of body fat percentage. And that makes sense because um, long distance hiking, that long slow cardio primarily burns fat as a fuel source. So if that's all you're doing, your body's going to prioritize storing more fat so you have more fuel and it's going to try and get rid of this heavy, costly muscle. I really noticed my hormones shifting around this five, six month mark as well. I think this is when my testosterone really starts to tank. All the markers of like motivation, sex drive, aggression, energy, all those things really start to decline for me right around that mark. And I didn't do blood tests this time, but my first time on the Appalachian Trail after hiking for six and a half months, I did some blood tests and my testosterone and free testosterone were low enough that I would have qualified for testosterone replacement therapy. I think your hormones is one of the main factors that leads to post-trail depression and why it's so hard to kind of get your body back into shape after you get off trail just because when you your testosterone and your uh, hormones like that are crashed it's just very difficult to get any sort of um, healthy balance back in your body you're just going to feel tired and listless and not motivated and not energized and it can definitely be a long challenging road to get back into health. The first thing to really focus on would be your nutrition, cutting out the sugars and cutting down on your calories and just trying to eat as clean as you possibly can. Just doing, you know, meats and vegetables and no sugars and kind of watching, you know, watching your processed carbohydrate intake. And the second thing is to make sure you're getting good quality sleep. It's really easy in the beginning off trail to just sleep all the time, but then it's really easy then to screw up your sleep cycle so that you're staying up too late and sleeping in through the day. And all of that also leads to a negative outcome in your hormone cycle. So focus on nutrition and sleep in your first month back from trail. And then once you've given your body some time to rest, you really do have to start exercising again. Getting back into the gym for me is always is pretty challenging, like all the joints hurt, your muscles just don't want to move in that way, and it'll take a couple weeks just like starting off the trail. It takes a couple weeks to get acclimatized um, to the trail, it takes a couple weeks to get acclimatized to going back and moving your body again, doing weight-bearing exercises. But those are all the things you have to do, and you're not going to want to do them is the thing, but these are the things you have to do in order to get your hormones and your body back into balance, which is finally at that point you'll want to do these things. So it's kind of this chicken and the egg thing. You just got to know this is what you have to do to get your body back into balance. And then once your body's back in balance, then you're going to have the energy and the motivation and the drive to continue doing these things. I finished the trail at 175 pounds, so that's 33 pounds lost in nine and a half months. So that's about 15% of my body weight, which is pretty reasonable given the length and the nature of the trip. I lost about 50% of my strength in my legs and closer to 60 to 70% of the strength in my upper body. But it all comes back very quickly. It only took about three months for me to get my body weight back up to 190 and to regain most of my strength. And now a year later, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm running about 40 miles a week and training Muay Thai about 20 hours preparing for a fight. 
Doing a long trail will temporarily wreck your body and wreck your hormones, but it does have really lasting benefits. I've hiked in total about 14,000 miles now, and after every long hike, my body is just more hardened and more resilient to injury of any sort. I was able to run and win a 106 miler after my three month hike in 2021. I was able to work a season on a hotshot crew doing incredibly intense manual labor having never done that type of work before and that was just because my body had been built up and resilient from doing the Appalachian Trail and the Continental Divide Trail. And now I'm over here in Thailand able to train for hours and hours a day and put my body through this brutal regime because I built up that work volume, that work capacity from being on the trail for so long. And aside from the adaptations that you make in your body, your mind really adapts because after you've hiked for 12, 16 hours a day, every day for months on end, um, other training sessions just aren't a big deal. If you're in the gym for an hour, it's not a big deal. You're training Muay Thai for three hours, it's not a big deal because that's not nearly as much as hiking for 12 hours through the snow and the ice and all the other bullshit you have to deal with on the trail. I need to find a place to do this, but I bet if I scan the bone density of my legs, uh, you would find that those bones are much more dense than the average person just from all of the repeated impacts of walking thousands of miles. So that's what you can expect from your hike. The first one to three months, you'll feel like you're in the best shape of your life. You'll lose a ton of fat. You'll look fantastic. The next three to six months is going to get more difficult. You're going to start putting on more fat and losing more muscle. And after about the five, six month mark, your body's really going to start breaking down. Your hormones are going to crash. You're going to feel terrible. Your body's going to hurt. But in the end, you will come out the other side stronger with a more resilient body, with a much more resilient mind, and be able to have much increased work capacity for whatever you do in the future.